Hi everybody, Joe Beer Magnet here. I've been asked by strumschool.com to show you how to play a song called Gone 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 by Philip Phillips. Okay, so there's a couple things I want you to know before we start though. Number one is that this is based off the solo acoustic version where he uses a pick. The, the studio version, he, there is some finger picking going on that's a little bit more complicated and if you want to go over that then feel free to hook, uh, hit me up on Strum School. Number two is that most of you, if you're playing acoustic guitar by yourself, the solo acoustic version is going to be the one that you want to do. Alright, number three is that this song is recorded a half step down and the reason that it's recorded a half step down is because the guitar is tuned a half step down. Now I was thinking about doing that then I thought every one of you out there probably has your guitar tuned just to the normal E instead of tuning it to an E flat. So I figured I'd do the lesson in the normal tuning. If you want to play along with the song on the record or with the performances, live performances, you're going to have to tune your guitar down to E flat. That means that every string is going to, instead of being E, A, D, G, B, and E, it's going to have to be E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, and E flat. This is probably done because it was a better, better range for the singer. Let's jump right into it. So the first thing we need are our chords. If you don't have your chords down, then we're not going to get the fancy thing, uh, fancy picking going on. So let's go over the chords. I'm going to go through all of them now, and then we'll go through them individually in just a second. First of all, a G chord, and this is the four finger G chord, not the three finger G chord. We'll go over that in a second. We have a D sus chord. We have our E minor seven, and we have our C nine. All right, now, so we have some basic chords that you probably already know. If you don't, there's some information here in Strum School. You need to know your basic G, D, C, and E minor chords. So if you don't know those, um, come go check them out and then come back when you're ready. All right, now, there's just slight variations of those chords. So a lot of people know the G chord and either played this way or this way. Now, if you know it with your third finger up on top here, this song's going to be really hard to learn. Um, you really have to do it with your third finger, uh, your second finger up here on top. Now the reason for that is that we need four fingers. We're going to have four fingers on this, a little slight variation. And let's go back to that basic three finger G chord where you have your third finger up on the high E string third fret. Okay. Now move that to the B string third fret, just one string that way. So instead of here, it's here. And then your pinky goes down on the third fret of the E string. The two other fingers are exactly the same. So we have three, two, zero, zero, three, three. All right. Now these two fingers up top here, the ring finger and the pinky, are going to stay there the whole time. Okay? Every single chord. So those are some nice little jangly chords that, that stay on top of the whole chord progression. We move to our D chord. You can put your normal D chord down, but you got to keep that pinky down. Notice that my third finger and pinky stay exactly where they are. Now I'm just keeping, I, I can't have two fingers on the same string because that's not going to matter. If I lift up this finger, nothing happens. But you know, that's the D chord that I know. So I'm just going to leave it there with the pinky on top. All right, next up, E minor chord. These two fingers, remember, stay the same. These go there. So we have zero, two, two, zero, three, three. All right, very good. And to our C9 chord, very common chord. It's like a C chord, except for, again, these two fingers stay exactly the same. So like this, it's pretty much a G chord. And you bring it down a set of strings. So you have the bottom half of a C chord with these two notes on top. I have three, two, zero, three, three. No E string on that. All right, let's get back to the song. All right, now it's important that you have the basic structure down of the song, and that basic structure is going to be the basic chords and how long you play them for. If you don't have those down, then the picking pattern is going to be really difficult. So let's just go through the chords. G, two measures. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four to the D. 
E minor. E minor 7. To C9. And back to the beginning. And so forth. If you can't strum through those without taking a break in between each chord, then it's going to be really difficult when you add the picking pattern. Now the other thing is you can add a strumming pattern to just those and you can get away with the song. But we're going to go over the picking pattern right now. All right, so the picking pattern. I'm going to tab it out and I'm going to put it on the screen for you. If you have trouble, then you can pause it and you can spend your time on it. But I want you to check out the whole thing right now as a nice overview. All right, so the picking pattern. And now the picking pattern for the G chord. Now, I'm only going to use the top three strings, but dun -dun -dun -dun, I have the whole G chord down there. And the reason I have the whole G chord down there is because as the song gets a little further and further into the song, the strumming pattern gets a little more intense and bigger, and you might as well have the chord down there for when that happens. Now, number two is that if I miss a string and play a string I don't mean to, the chord is still there, and everything will sound hunky-dory. Okay, now, let's go over the picking pattern. Just the top three strings for the beginning, and... I say I have to say this with every student, a lot of singer songwriters, they um well they they're singing along and they're just getting into the song, so sometimes it's a little different from measure to measure. I'm gonna show you the boiled down version and then you can uh, go for it, okay? So this might be a little cleaner than on the uh, live version or on the studio version, but it's the uh the the consensus. Okay. D chord, four strings this time. Two, the E minor chord. together. All together. All right, now you might be thinking, wait a minute, that doesn't sound exactly like it. Well, that's because liberties are being taken and sometimes two strings are being strummed as the song intensifies. Up to speed. saying wait a minute here that G chord sounded different the second time you're gonna open up and play the whole chord and you're also gonna notice when I went up to speed I started playing some other strings like I was going you start throwing a little bit more of a strumming in there when you get into the song but you have to have kind of that bare bones um, structure to it and then when you get into it you can start taking liberties that uh, will allow the song to have a little bit more um, life to it Okay. Okay, so now a little bit of a recap. There's some things that you should look out for, things that you can keep in mind to make your playing a little bit better when you're learning the song. Number one, like I said, you got to know your foundation. Number one, your chords. Number two, switching between the chords, keeping good time, keeping a good beat. Number three, when you add your picking pattern in there, you got to learn the clean version. And when you get into it, you can start hitting the extra strings and strumming a little bit more into it. But it's going to require knowing how to 
play that basic picking pattern. All right, next up, there's some things that you can look out for. Number one, remember, even though you're not playing the whole chord, have the whole chord down. So when you start digging in a little bit more, when you hit those extra strings, you got, got a G chord still. Okay, so just don't leave your two fingers up there, even though you're only playing the top three strings at the beginning. Do the whole thing. All right, another tip is if you have your D chord, D sus chord for this song down, have your normal D chord in your fingers and then have your pinky down on the third fret. And the reason I have two fingers on the same string doesn't seem to really make any sense, but the, the reason that I do that is because a lot of songs, is a lot of songs, you switch back and forth between that D and D sus a lot. So you might as well get used to having both fingers down for a quick change. And that's a very common thing to have, so just uh, something to keep in mind. All right, so if you have any trouble, hit me up at Strum School. Um, uh, you can either schedule a lesson, uh, or you might just find me online already um, during one of my shifts that I have at Strum School, where I'll be taking questions over chat and taking on-demand lessons right on the spot. All right, so good luck, keep playing, and I'll see you next time.